Hi guys, Chris here with Super Savvy Travelers. Hey, we are here with Nick Mehta from Studio Legali Mehta because we came in across a situation that we felt was quite urgent and really needed to be addressed for everything that it, it means to the people that we have. So please stay tuned to the end of this video because we never like to present a problem without a solution. And we do have solutions and we have all of the data here. So after you're done with this video, you're gonna know uh, probably more than a lot of people know, including a lot of the property people in Italy uh, about this particular situation. So in a nutshell, we found out that as of January, 2023, Canadians are not allowed to purchase property in Italy. Now, there's all kinds of ins and outs on that. Uh, Nick has gone over and researched all of the Canadian law and checked with the notaries. He has all the scoop on it here. So I'm gonna turn it over to him. And then afterwards, I can ask a few questions on some of the specific situations that we have right now. So Nick, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate you being here on such short notice. My pleasure, thank you for having me. Okay, so what do we have here? We had a bombshell, like you said, dropped on us um, with clients who have attempted to buy property in Italy from Canada, clients from Canada, and we were told they couldn't um, because of this new law, this new Canadian law. So I'm going to ask you to please go over all of that and all the details and what it means to our Canadian clients. Sure. Basically, there is a basic principle in Italy of reciprocity, meaning Italy will allow foreigners to do things in Italy, like buy property in Italy, if Italians are allowed in the foreigners, um, the foreigners country to do the same thing. Huh. So Canada apparently last year um, issued this new law preventing uh, individuals and corporations, foreign individuals and foreign corporations um, to buy residential units in Canada unless wow. certain conditions apply. Ah. So um, Italy, because of this uh, uh, default reciprocity rule that applies, doesn't Italy doesn't need a specific law to say, well, we're going to reciprocate, we're going to retaliate. Now Canadians cannot buy property in Italy. No, there is actually a default uh, public policy rule in Italy that applies without the need of the government having to um, take action, okay? Uh -huh. So uh, that that is the where all of this started from, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. So um, the law that we're talking about in Canada has a specific provision about when it comes into force. And the provision is January 1st, 2023. Okay. So uh, really on a um, overnight, it changed basically, and uh, but there are certain provisions in, in it that might might represent for some people uh, a way to to uh, find some workarounds. Ah, so, okay. Yes, yes. So um, I have contacted actually several notaries, as we we're saying, and uh, um, to, to, to see what they thought about it. I also contacted some experts, some legal experts in Canada. And uh, I have to tell you that I was uh, uh, pretty surprised to, 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 to learn that many of the people who uh, um, I thought that would be aware of um, this law and the consequences were actually almost like um, cut out of other guard. Um, now, it is important to remember that in Italy, uh, the end of year holiday break lasts much longer than in the US or Canada. And in particular, uh, you know, it starts right before Christmas and then the holiday break ends on the uh, on January 6th, the Epiphany. Ah, okay. So this year was a Friday, so Saturday, Sunday, most notaries uh, took off the whole break and went back to work Monday, a few days ago, ah, okay. um, January the 9th. So this year, really, uh, on, on January 9th, some of the notaries started to uh, get getting the first uh, uh, first deeds or, or, or need to deal with uh, this situation. So when I called some of the notaries, some of them told me, Mr. Meta or Nick, depending on the issues I had, I'm learning about this from you. I haven't heard about it, so let me get back to you. And uh, after talking with many notaries, I realized that uh, um, they, um, the, the 
Italian national notary body had not really circulated any uh, guidelines about this situation, in spite of the fact that the law in Canada was issued uh, several months ago. So this is not something that happened a few weeks ago. This went into force in June in Canada, or actually was issued on in June and went into force in January on January 1st this year. Okay. So um, that is unusual because usually when there are um, new regulations that are into force, the Italian nas national uh, body of notaries uh, will um, study such regulations and the impact that those regulations have to the Italian real estate uh, market and will provide Italian notaries with some guidelines about how to deal with it. Okay. They are still probably figuring things out. Um, however, as I was saying, um, I reviewed the law, uh, the Canadian law, and it is important also to remember that the Canadian legal system is very, very different from the Italian legal system. Yeah. There are two completely different systems. Um, the Canadian system is a common law country and uh, in Italy is a civil law country. So there are many things that are different. However, there are some basic things that uh, apply in a very similar manner. For example, when a law enters into force and this specific Canadian law establishes the January 1st as the day of uh, coming into effect. Okay. However, also it provides a specific clause where it says that if someone has committed to a purchase before the law entering into force, actually you can go through with your purchase. So yeah. okay. exactly. So now, what does that mean? It depends on how Italian notaries will interpret that. Because, right. and here, you know, you have dealt with Italy enough, uh, long enough to know that every notary, every comune, every authority in Italy has their own interpretation and view of the law and how policies should be enforced or applied. So. In Italy, when you sign a, a purchase offer and that purchase offer is accepted, that is a binding contract. That is that um, you are bound to an obligation to purchase. And that is exactly what the Canadian law says. If you are bound to an obligation to purchase, you can go through. And if that obligation, if that uh, uh, binding agreement was valid before the law entering into force. Okay. 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 So that would be the date that the compromesso was signed and the actual deposit money received by the seller. Is that right? So the compromesso was signed. Yes. Yeah. The money received. It depends. There might be a compromesso where he says, "We, uh, I commit to buy. Yeah. If you accept, I will send you the money." Yeah. So. Uh, the fact that you accept already binds us to the obligation and then I'll make the payment. That's a separate obligation, which is a part, part of the main purchase agreement um, obligation. So um, the money payment might be definitely considered by Italian notaries as another strong indication that the contract was actually uh, binding but it's not necessarily legally a requirement. Uh, okay. um, yes. Another very strong indication is if the parties actually complied with the law and registered the compromesso or the purchase offer after it was signed. We always recommend our clients register the purchase offer as soon as it is accepted. Yes. It is a legal obligation and offers a number of protections in general. Yeah. Okay. So um, that would be definitely um, something that would give the notary certainty as to the date when that contract was signed. Okay. Because now people can get, you know, a little bit creative and backdate yeah. contracts, you know, December 30th, and, and they might think that they can get away with it. However, once again, some notaries might say, well, you didn't register it. You didn't pay the, the deposit right. last year. So... How do I know that everyone is telling the truth? Yes. Okay. Um, however, you actually have 
20, 30 days to register a compromesso. So you could very well register now a compromesso that was signed last year because we are still within the deadline to register a compromesso. Yeah. Addis additionally, you can even register a compromesso late if you pay a small uh, penalty. Oh, okay. um, very nominal. Yes, exactly. So a notary might be satisfied if you register a compromesso, pay a little penalty, and so you have a time tax authority certifying that the compromise was filed, was registered, is dated before 2022, so you're good to go. So these are all um, options regarding the date of uh, when the contract, when, when the law went into force, and when the obligation to purchase was um, entered into uh, effect, actually. Okay. Okay, that's that's actually very good news. Although we did have a situation where the client, you know, back in I think it was May, uh, signed the compromesso, and then there was a lot of back and forth about you know whether this part of the property was uh, you know the deed issues and the cadastral plans and all of that. So we have that particular situation. So we can still, if it's not recorded, I'm hoping it is. But in Calabria, I'm seeing they don't do that a lot. So if it's not recorded then we should go ahead and record it immediately. Um, however, the notario in this particular situation just said, no, we can't do it because Canadians can't buy. So um, maybe I can get a, a copy of the law or find it online or something and have it translated and give it to the notario so that they can know exactly and then um, go from there. Yeah, definitely. Um, when we face situations like this, uh, it's definitely important to discuss it with, with the notary. Present the notary with a solution. Yeah. Rather than telling the notary, this is the law, what do you think? Usually yeah. our recommendation is, here's the law. This is what we think because of this, this, and that. And I think you would be safe agreeing with this interpretation because of X, Y, and Z. Oh, okay. um, and uh, many times we've seen that when there is a gray area situation, notaries are super busy. You know this better than me. Uh, if they don't see me the solution, they might push back a little bit. Uh, okay. Push the can down the road. They might say, you know what? I'm going to wait for the National Notary Association to release the guidelines and see what happens. Yeah. However, um, if you present the solution, for example, you mentioned that the property had cadastral issues. Yes. To help to help our um, viewers, cadastral issues means that there was some record about the property parcel, the yes. zoning, uh, or other permit uh, building permit inconsistencies. All of that might play into your favor because uh -huh. the law uh, focuses and specifies that this um, provision is exclusively referred to residential uh, dueling. So, and then they go on on defining it. So what's a dueling unit? A dueling unit, the law says, means a residential unit, and I'm reading right now, yeah. that contains private kitchen facilities, a uh -huh. private bath and a private living area. Now, what are private kitchen facilities? If I'm buying a unit that doesn't have kitchen facilities because in Italy we know that residential homes usually come with nothing, almost yeah. basically just a shell almost sometimes. Yes. So yeah. if that is the case, perhaps you might find a notary who may agree that uh, that is outside of the scope, scope of that law. Because, uh -huh. um, yes, because the scope of the law in Canada is to prevent investment funds and uh, um, um entrepreneurs to buy ready available homes and uh remove them from the market of people who need them and uh rent them or leave them empty on the market which would affect the price and you know demand and offer however if you're buying a home that, is, that needs a lot of work remodeling and everything that might be outside of the scope of the canadian law and if the notary agrees that at the end of the day uh, a foreigner would be allowed to buy a property that does not have kitchen facilities, yeah. uh, then if you're buying a property in Italy that doesn't have kitchen facilities, the notary might agree for you to go ahead with that purchase. Ah. And, and the same thing is if you're buying a home that is not currently zoned 
as a residential unit. Because as you know, many times people, in order to avoid paying property taxes in Italy, they will change the zoning, especially if a door and windows are missing, and things like that. They yeah. will just, you know, change the zoning and, and uh, qualify it as collabente. You might have heard that word, collabente, which yeah. is basically just, you know, a, a unit that you cannot uh, use it at a private home because they de-zoned it basically. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. That's new for me. So thank you for that. Okay. So basically what, what we're looking at here is here's the Canadian law. And we, if we apply it to the letter, law, basically taking the same descriptions and the same definitions and just applying them to Italian law, that makes total sense. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, there are some people also are concerned and say, well, uh, my spouse, became a resident. I have a ton of clients who one of them pursued moving to Italy and then yeah. the spouse will follow along and buy together something. Now they say, what happens now? Like I am a foreigner. My partner is a resident. What happens? Where the law in Canada says that if you are a permanent resident, you can buy a home. Okay. If you're not a permanent resident, you cannot buy a home. Okay. So if um, this is one of the exceptions. So if foreigners, who get a visa and a permanent residency in Italy can buy a home. Okay. However, there is also another exception. If you are the spouse or civil union partner of someone who has permanent residency in Italy, um, sorry, in Canada, no. you can, as a foreigner, buy the home with your spouse or civil law partner. Okay. So that's you know, another exception. So it really, it's, it's a matter of checking a specific, the specific case circumstances and discussing um, the, 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 specific, um, the specifics with the notary involved. And sometimes in our practice, we're seeing that if a notary say A, you might find a notary who says B. B. And okay. you might want to go with the, the, the notary who says B. If the notary who says A, uh, is you know uh, too busy to um, hear you out and uh, perhaps change his mind uh, or her mind. We several times we have gone to an alternative professional to to close. Right. Or or you might have a situation where it might not be the crazy of a scenario to dezone a unit, so remove the residential zoning, buy and then register it again as a residential unit. So huh? there, depending on the situation, depending on the circumstances, there might be some options. Okay, okay. Now I had kind of floated the idea of, uh, you know, getting an LLC in America and then buying it under the LLC or perhaps even a trust, which I know nothing about trust, but um, those, uh, to me, those could be options, but they might be more difficult than because we have, you know, the clients that have already signed a compromise. So it sounds like they're safe, relatively. Um, we just have to enlighten this particular notile or whatever notile we end up with. So that's fine. But I have guys that haven't decided on their property yet and uh, have not signed a compromesso. So what do we do with them? Is that, are we in now the realm of, um, you know, dezoning a property and then rezoning it or telling the, the seller, take the kitchen out? We don't want the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, about the kitchen, it's really a matter of how the notary would uh, approach that. If the, if the notary thinks that um, by kitchen facilities means that then, that it would be sufficient for the place to have uh, sink drain and uh, uh, water uh, uh, plugs ready available, then, you know, there might not be room there to, to, yeah. to do it. But uh, uh, with respect to the uh, incorporating a company and buying it through the company, I see two limitations here. One, a foreign company would still be a foreign entity. Ah, and if okay. you yeah. yes, and if you incorporate the company in Italy, because I, I that that this is a very uh, um, good point, a good option, a good question. But the law specifically says the Canadian law that yeah. if you um, incorporate a company in Canada, if the majority and the control of the company is from foreign individuals, still uh -huh. the, the the prohibition will will stand. 
So uh -huh. and it, 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 the same way mirroring the Canadian provisions, an Italian company controlled by someone who is not an Italian permanent resident would not be entitled to buy an Italian property. Uh -huh. So unfortunately, that wouldn't do it. Oh, um, um, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, yeah. um, you know, we, we, you can get an LLC in New Mexico. I don't know if Canadians can do that, but you can relatively little money in New Mexico. You can set up your LLC as an American company. I don't know that, that maybe is just too many steps away from uh, a good option. You know what I mean? It might just be sure. too much to do just to buy a house when there might be better options available. There might be an option to incorporate a company in the U.S. And would the notary go that so far so to, to, to check who the owner of the U.S. company or trust is? And yeah. but, um, to that point, if you're buying a home that is, you know, under 200000 300000 the whole corporate structure might not make sense. Additionally, yeah. when you buy through a corporation, as we know, you cannot take advantage of a number of tax incentives, for example, the reduced um, transfer taxes that you pay upon purchase instead yeah. of being based on the value and record of the property, which is usually 20, 30% the price. Yeah. As a corporation, you pay taxes on the full amount and there is no first home tax reduction. And so it's- yeah. yeah. Um, Plus, there's the whole accounting, compliance, and everything in Italy. It's it's just uh, a lot. There's no mortgage option. Obviously, there there are so many preclusions. If you are buying a seven hundred plus seven hundred thousand plus property, yeah. uh, it might make sense. And if you need to do a lot of refurbishment and and and, and spend money to you know, th there might be some side benefits. And you know what? At the end of the day, I might. I might use a company for X, Y, and Z purpose. Okay, that, that makes sense. So uh, going forward, it looks like what we need to do is probably enlighten the notayo, like a pick a notayo in our area and enlighten him on the various things about like the kitchen thing. Um, I've, I've never dezoned a property, so I don't know what it is. I, I think it was about 1200 bucks to rezone. We have a warehouse that we could rezone as residential. Um, and we talked about, it. I thought it was like 1200 euros. I don't know. But um, so these are options. So there will be costs associated with it. But I think the important thing is just to see what the notayo is going to take. The kitchen thing sounds very promising. Also, you could rip out the toilet and be dead. <laughs> in the bathroom and uh, just call it a shell because it sounds like people can buy ruins or they yeah, can definitely. Buy partial ruins or to to restructure houses um that's that's the biggest question i think that's the easiest right is for yeah. people coming in um they may not be able to buy a home that's that's already done they might have to buy one and and that needs to be redone it may just yeah. limit their options rather than eliminating them Yes, yes. And there are also situations where, um, you know, the Canadian law is, uh, has certain specifics that um, are not that easy to compare to what they would refer to in Italy. When I'm talking about, for example, there are some exclusions. Uh, the law does not apply to um, detached buildings that have more than three uh, units, more than three dwellings what does it mean um I, 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 like how would that like if you were saying a warehouse yeah. can you create more than three units in it perhaps you could you could because it's huge and that's the end goal because you want to do a bnb business and so uh if you're buying if 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 the property has more than three dwelling units uh, you can go ahead and purchase it without any issues um and um so but it's so it's really on a case by case situation and you need to have a notary who is willing to uh get into looking at the canadian law and uh, rather than saying the canadians cannot buy anymore i'm not doing any transaction because i'm busy enough and i want to waste my time on these type of transactions end okay of the, end of the story yeah yeah okay good so i i think what we'll do then moving forward is uh with our canadian guys is find out what they want 
um, and then maybe send them to you to create some sort of uh, a compelling, uh, how can I say, compelling argument to the notios with backed up by the legal principles. I think that uh, might be the best. I, I would be very happy to do that. Obviously, there might be uh, what I hope sincerely is that the uh, Italian Notary Association comes up with some guidelines. They have a phenomenal um phenomenal department that that handles uh, uh and reviews these type of situations and issues uh, um studies yeah. about how like their recommendations to italian notaries and they circulate those studies so um i sincerely hope and i'm pretty confident that they will issue something that uh, uh, and usually they are very reliable and sophisticated so um until that happens, definitely, uh, if you have the, have the opportunity to um, talk with the notary, try to engage with the notary. If you see that the notary is not prone to uh, enter into a conversation, then yes, go to someone else who okay. can help you prepare the case. Obviously, we would be very happy to do that, but I'm sure, you know, uh, there might be are there other other professionals might be available now we have contacted notaries throughout Italy because we work nationwide yeah. and uh, and as I said also someone in Canada uh Italian um, uh, Canadian firms and everyone is kind of trying to figure this out still because uh there have been no official guidelines and uh uh, so at least for the next couple of weeks probably most likely it's going to be a, a case by case uh, type of approach. Okay. 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 Good. That makes sense. Good. Well, this is uh, an interesting development. And like I said, it came out of left field. So I got to thank you so much for uh, making yourself available so quickly um, and doing all the research behind it. <laughs> My pleasure. Yes. Well, we, we have some cases and, and uh, we want to be prepared. So uh, if, if there is anything that we find out, I will make sure to let you know and uh, uh, so that you can, uh, you know, let uh, your your followers know. And uh, hopefully this. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah. uh, the, law, the law is supposed to uh, last only two years. That's what I heard. Um, yes. So um, there might be also additional creative strategies to kind of. Uh, do. Uh, not necessarily a purchase, but do some types of contracts for two years and then uh, complete the purchase after the law um, ethics terminate. That makes sense. Like for how, perhaps, uh, you know, after the two year period, the property reverts to that person. In the meantime, they have a tenancy. Tenancy. Something. Yes, ever. exactly. Yes. Exactly. That, that'd be easy to set up. Easy to set up. That's a great option. I love that. Yes. Okay. So, as, as I said, it's really a matter of um, um, a case by case situation. Uh, there yeah. are some some sales that don't allow for much flexibility, other sales that do. So it's uh, uh, and, and then there, there's a, such a huge number of potential options that, you know, uh, yeah. So uh, definitely let's keep let's keep in touch. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm probably going to ask the client to contact you in this particular situation that we have so that maybe you can have a conversation with the notaio or something like that. So I think that might be the next step. It may be very simple to iron out. And uh, there's a lot of notaios in Scalia. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, you know, I'm definitely. sure we can find somebody that uh, that we can work with. Um, not saying we can't work with this one. They've been very great up to this point and I think they just hit it and didn't didn't know all the specifics so it's very good that you've ironed it out for everybody absolutely well it's just uh right now there's also a lot of speculation what what I um uh, my uh, what I presented is a lot based on best guesstimate or what uh, uh some of the approaches might be from notaries um and how we would uh, like our approach to structure an opinion when interacting with a notary. So, but uh, uh, we, I have also read that uh, in Canada, they got a lot of pushback. So who okay. knows if this will last because they asked for, uh, for this law to be retracted because oh. 
actually the real estate market had already started to uh, retract in Canada and they are afraid that this law is going to hurt the market too much. Yes. So, uh, so we'll see. It's uh, as everything else, it's just a uh, situation still in progress. So, yeah. And I think until we get a definitive statement from the Notayo Association, we're kind of just sort of floating as best we can. Yes, so. definitely. Okay. definitely. okay. And, you know, it could be that that Notayo is waiting for that. Now, do you have an idea as to when that definitive statement will come out? I it's, guess. Uh, I, I was very surprised to learn that they hadn't issued it yet, or yeah. at least that they had not um, circulated or publicized that uh, much. Yeah. Um, because several notaries were completely um, unaware. Uh, uh, and once, yeah, and once again, let's remember that uh, um, that many notaries went back to work Monday, so four days right. ago. So yeah. um, they, they are still with huge workloads to deal with. They're still digging themselves out. And yeah. uh, today we tried to book an appointment uh, and they said, yeah, well, let's see, like the end of the month, like really the end of the month? Like, yeah, it's, it's just uh, they're overwhelmed. So probably they said, ah, there's this law, so I'm not going to do it now. We'll yeah. talk again sometime in the future. <laughs> okay. okay, good. Well, thank you for all this data. That's really, that actually makes me feel better. And I like the options that you've outlined, you know, specifically the one about possibly, you know, closing after this law loses its effect and having a, you know, a tenancy or whatever for the period in between. I mean, that could be the ideal scene. So, yeah. good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and definitely uh, if you have an option to uh, show a recorded binding agreement before the law entered the law, I think that might be also another keystone of uh, possible solutions. Yeah. OK, yeah. wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. OK, great. Well, um, obviously, we'll all be looking to see when that definitive statement comes out. But failing that, we'll just uh, move forward as best we can. So I so appreciate yourself, you making yourself available to us and our guys. Um, I have to say that uh, the information that you've given us so far and that Alessandro and Andrea, Dr. Andrea and Dr. Alessandro gave us has just been pure gold. So we're super, super thrilled and super grateful. So thank you, Nick. Glad to hear that. Always happy to share. And uh, it is, you know, it's a big uh, transition from, you know, when you buy your move from the other side of the ocean uh, to, to Europe. So uh, whatever we can do to help, be very happy to to be part of uh, your effort and endeavor. Oh, well, we're so happy. Thank you so much. My pleasure.